I have right here what is probably the most powerful Optiplex office gaming PC built on an Optiplex 7020. And what I mean when I say most powerful is most likely to catch on fire. Because when I built this PC, I committed probably the two most heinous crimes on PC building record. And so if you want to know how you can also build your own $250 fire hazard so you can cash in on some of your fire insurance in your home, well then I have some instructions for you. What you're going to need to start with is an old office PC. And because I'm basic, I went with an Optiplex 7020, which came by the way with an i7-4790, which is important because not only is it going to give you great performance with four cores and eight threads, but it's also a a toasty boy coming in with an 84 watt TDP and that's going to be really important when we're looking to cause fires. All told the Optiplex came with the CPU, the motherboard, the CPU cooler, the power supply and then of course the case which meant that I had to get a graphics card, RAM, and an SSD. Now for the RAM, I just picked up two sticks of four gigs, so eight gigs total of some, some DDR3 RAM that was compatible with this uh, Optiplex, and that cost me around $23. I also got a 512 gigabyte SSD for about $25, and then I already had a graphics card. I had an RX 580, and so I used that, but you can also get an RX 580 for around $95 on eBay pretty easily. Now, that RX 580 is really important because it is a very high power graphics card coming in at 185 watts. After dusting everything off and reapplying some thermal paste, it was time to go ahead and reassemble everything and start building it. Now, initially I had planned to use a different power supply for this system because the PSU that came with the Optiplex is a standard ATX size. However, it does not have standard ATX connectors. So the motherboard uses an eight pin instead of a 24 pin motherboard power connector. And that is a really big deal because the recommended power supply limit or wattage for a system with these parts is 385 watts minimum. And the one that comes with the power or with the Optiplex is only 280 watts. And as if that weren't enough, the power supply that comes with the Optiplex does not have an eight pin adapter for a graphics card, which is a huge deal because in order to connect a graphics card to this power supply, I had to use a two SATA power to eight pin adapter, which is also really horrible because according to this comment that I found on a random YouTube video, I know, really reliable source, each SATA connector only supplies about 56 watts of power. And again, our RX 580 is a 185 watt graphics card, which means that even with the two SATA connectors, our RX 580 wants to pull at least 73 more watts than what the SATA connectors can supply to it. So just to recap, the RX 580 is pu pulling 73 watts more than the SATA connectors can supply, and then the whole system is pulling 104 watts more than the power supply can provide. You partner that with the fact that the SATA to 8-pin connector has two more points of failure than a standard ATX 8-pin connector, and it's just waiting for something to melt or burn or explode. Now, technically, technically, I could have purchased a 24 pin to eight pin power adapter. And technically, a fire extinguisher is about as much as I had initially purchased a power supply for this system for. But also technically, fireworks are only legal where I live for about five days out of the year. Unless, of course, you build your own. So the first thing I did after putting everything back to together was to fire up 3D Mark to stress the system. And sure enough, almost immediately, it started pulling about 300 watts from the wall. But to my disappointment, no fireworks. And so the next logical step was to go ahead and fire up some games to see how this thing performed. And not too surprisingly, it performed rather well. On the easier to run esports titles like Fall Guys, um, there's nothing that you can throw at this PC that the RX 580 can't handle. And that's saying something because the RX 580 is actually the bottleneck 
in this system. Running at 1440p max settings on Fall Guys, we were well above 60 FPS and everything was totally playable. But even as you move up graphically in intensity, the system does pretty well. Running a mixed 1080p settings in both Biomutant and Warzone 2, we got above 60 FPS. And in CSGO at 1440p max settings, we were still able to hit a pretty reasonable 60 FPS, although sometimes we did dip below that in performance, but that's to be expected. We're pulling quite a bit. The only downside to running all of these games was that at peak, we were pulling 330 watts from the wall. May I remind you that that is at least a 50 watt fire hazard. But after hours of gameplay, the system was still doing pretty well with no signs of explosions. Now that was kind of a relief, but it was also kind of concerning, you know what I mean? Just because I built this system doesn't mean that you should go out and build this system too. And let me explain why that is. As I mentioned before, the RX 580 is actually the bottleneck in this system, and it's not a power efficient card by any means. So if you really wanted to just take advantage of everything that this system can give, then you really want a better graphics card than the RX 5 580. So you should probably get something or look at getting something like a GTX 1080 from Nvidia, which is a way better pairing for the i7-4790, but it also runs you about an extra $50 on eBay. And at that point, you're probably going to want to protect your investment and get the different power supply with the 24 pin to 8 pin adapter. But then also at that point, you could really use some more RAM and utilize up to 16 gigs on this system. So all of that is to say that if you want to use the Optiplex 7020 with the i7 40 or 4790 to the best of its ability, then you should expect to spend closer to $350 than $250. But that extra $100 gets you quite a bit. And let me explain what I mean. With a better PSU, you have the reassurance knowing that your PC is not just going to randomly fail or randomly explode on you and fry all of the components in it. But not only that, with a GTX 1080, you can probably do some pretty awesome 1440p gaming. And if you're willing to adjust some of the settings down in terms of uh, like textures and details, then you might even be able to do a little bit of 4K gaming. And that is pretty great. That's way better than 1080p gaming, and that's almost guaranteed with a 1080. But not only that, the 1080 by NVIDIA can utilize what is known as NVIDIA's encoder or NVENC, which is really useful if you're editing video or if you're streaming. And so you get a lot if you're just willing to spend that extra $100. And ultimately, I guess what I'm saying is that I would not build this specific system. I already had the RX 580, and so I decided to use that RX 580. Um, and I didn't do nearly enough research before I built this PC. And so I would recommend doing your research and go ahead and size up the GPU, so to speak, so you can get that extra performance and really get what you're, what you're paying for, because that extra $100 is totally worth it. The other thing you could do is you could actually size down the CPU, so to speak. But that's a topic for my next Office Gaming PC build video. Um, so get subscribed because you're probably not going to want to miss that one. I'm gonna go ahead and just post my uh, final build parts as well as the total price just right here. So if you really are interested in building your own fire hazard or your DIY firework, you can go ahead and see it there. Or if you just wanna see what I did so you can avoid making the exact same mistakes that I made, then here you go, here's your parts list. Go ahead and knock yourself dead. I hope this was useful to you, but that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one.